Welcome <laughs> to another episode of Driving Through the Rest with your favorite host, Inelia. Well, hosts and Larry. Yes, and PB. And PB, who seems to be active today. Yes. Yes. It's a beautiful sunny day and the chickens are scratching and she loves to watch them. To watch the chickens <laughs> and talk to them. And later on, on the second part of this uh, podcast, we'll also be talking with Ilya and Adelina. Right. Ilya and Adelina, yes. second hour. Second hour. This is an interesting one. For some people, it'll be probably... Brand new. Uh, I was thinking for some people, it'll be like, oh, yeah, I've heard something about it before. But for probably a lot, large majority of you, you'll be like, I don't understand what you're talking about. Right. Yeah. That's how it was for me. When I first was introduced to this. What? This we thing. The we need to talk. <laughs> the we need to talk. <laughs> oh, you you have a lot of fun with we need to talk. Yes, we need to talk. Yes. We need to talk. Oh, that's why I wore my shirt. <laughs> Your shirt my is not easy. wife's arm candy shirt. Yeah. Yes, because we need to talk. We need to talk. We need to talk. Yes. Okay. On with the reading, babe. Most of my readers are familiar with the we, but some are not. Wait, wait, wait. Did you say that part again? Most of my readers are some familiar. Some of my readers, maybe. Not a lot. Most of them? Yeah. Because I've written really about them quite a lot, so well, I have we talked about it We might have a past. lot more readers that we haven't talked to before. Do you think so? Yeah. Oh. Some, we'll just say, there are some of our readers. You can say whatever you like, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> But I'll say most of my readers are familiar with the we, but some are not. Here's a little summary in case you forgot who the we are or have never heard of them. Right. When I speak about my first awareness of being on Earth, I speak about a level of awareness that is not a singular identity. It is not an I am, but a we are. Does, sorry, but does that um, match up a little bit with the story you tell about always tripping over everything because you're you weren't seeing through your eyes you're seeing like as a we is that what it was um it is tied to it it is part of that other awareness field but it's not really what separated the we to the i am just the we weren't very good at the eyes <laughs> Very clever. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was a joke. I didn't realize it was a joke. Sorry, honey. <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> I, well, I just came out to be a joke this time. Okay. I didn't mean Got it. it. I didn't mean it, honey. Got it. So, can you tell that story real fast? Which story? The eyes. The, the eyes. The you can't see through your eyes. Well, uh, yeah, like I said, it's not actually... The we and the I? No, the we and the I in that sense, right? <laughs> yes. We have eyes. Everybody has eyes. That Two of them in front of your face the, yeah, that, that people you perceive, perceive visual data from. And it's usually normally limited to what your mechanical aspects of your eye can see or like can allow in as data through the, through the pupil. Right? Yes. And um, so normally a person will be able to see slightly on the side of their head, here and here, and then mostly in front of their heads, and up from here, down, but not from here up. Uh, I'm, t I'm putting my hand on top of my head and on my side of my head, and below my head also, you can see below your head from around the chin up not lower than that so you can see pretty much very narrow band of visual input that's in front of your face right, with one minor exception parents of toddlers have eyes in the back of their head yes that's true and you're very funny today aren't you mm -mm. Yeah. it's the we honey yeah. 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 yeah whenever we talk about the we larry gets really nervous Starts and giggling giggling and doing jokes and stuff it's very interesting Bad jokes yeah very it's, interesting. it's a data point yeah it is a data point point. and um 
when I was a little girl, I can't remember how old I was, but old enough that... I think three, I was, was it? Yeah, old enough that I was walking around. And talking a little bit. Talking quite well. I started talking at nine months, so <laughs> three years I was an expert. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. It wow. freaked my aunties out. I bet it did. Yeah, it totally freaked them out. Uh, my mum and dad didn't notice, but my aunties <laughs> did. <laughs> um, mm. I was, I kept always falling over. Like, I was a tripping chronic... Tripping over everything, huh? cro- Chronic falling over, tripping over. My knees were always bloody. Like, I experienced walking for the first three years of my life with my knees bloody. It was so bad, so bad. They probably thought you were um, making up for your language prowess by being clumsy or something. It's like, I have no so idea can what all, they thought. She can't walk I like don't a think real. they thought anything about no? that. No. Okay. They didn't pay any attention to me. <laughs> 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 Except for that one time. My mom and I were walking down the road, uh, and the sidewalk in Chile is like cement. And I fell and, wah, wah, you know, knees bleeding. And I fell again, wee, wee, more blood on top of the other blood, and then wee, wee, another time. And then my mum just had enough, <laughs> and she said, what on earth? <laughs> Can't you see what's in front of you? Just look at what's in front of you. Stop tripping over things. It's enough already. And I thought she was actually literally asking me that question, right? So I said, no, I can't see what's in front of me. Get her. And she looks at me and she says, why? <laughs> why can't you just look? Why can't you see what's in front of you? I said, because my head is on the way. Your head's in the way. My head is on the way. I can't see what's in front of me because my head is on the way. All I can see is the back of my head. I can't see what's in front of me. <laughs> oh, my God. And she's like, what are you talking about? I said, well, where, where, which, which, so she tried to get some information. And then she just screamed at me and it says, just Look through your eyes. <laughs> use your eyes to see what's in front of you. Just use your eyes. And she was really, like, upset, right? Putting a lot of force into that order. And I felt my awareness, right, and my vision shrinking, 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 shrinking and becoming two tiny little pinpricks as I look finally through my eyes. But I could see what was in front of me, right? Even though I could see only two little pinpricks of reality, <laughs> I could see what was in front of me. And then I carried on walking and I would sometimes trip, but not very often. Not nearly as the same. Huh? No. I think the next time I tripped, I was like 12 or something, right? So, yeah. yeah. That that's was why a little I, story. That's kind of how I confused the Wii with the eyes, being able to see through the eyes. So that the Wii wouldn't even bother with eyes. They would just absorb the reality through their we consciousness, I suppose. And um, I don't know how they could not see through your head. Because can't, they just, can't you just look around, you'd think? The viewpoint, you need a viewpoint to interact with your physical reality. So whether maybe, you, maybe. Whether you use your viewpoint by using your eyes or you use your viewpoint of our soul or you use a viewpoint that includes your entire body, um, it's all depending on the Maybe person. Maybe if your mom had said to move your viewpoint above your head or something like that, then yeah. you could have kept 360 yeah. plus seen in front of you. Exactly. Yeah. That would have been great. That would have been great. We'll have yes. to go back and talk to your mom about that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Where were we? Okay. So experience when, just, life. When, just bit start from there again. When I speak about my awareness of being on Earth, I speak about a level of awareness that is not a singular identity. It is not an I am, but a we are. Yes. I experience life and the world for a long time in that plural expression of awareness, becoming in early was a journey of coming into a singular identity from a collective consciousness that has no name. As it has no name, and I needed a way to explain it. As a child, I called it the we, and the name stuck. That's where the we comes from. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So becoming Inelia, Inelia, Inelia was the journey. 
becoming a singular instead of a collective we. Yes, that was a journey. Why did you need to have to become a singular? I didn't need to. Why not just to. stay as a we? I didn't need to. Or we didn't need to. Why did you? We wanted to. Well, why did we want to? To experience singularity. That was the whole point of coming into an incarnation. Oh. And you didn't um, probably realize at first... What? That being being in a body as a we, plural, wasn't the same as being in a body as a singular? Probably, yeah. Because just because uh, an, uh, an awareness or consciousness has a different experience of what a person is, doesn't mean they know more. Right. right? Okay. Some months ago, I felt to me, it felt to me that it was fun and safe to share more about this we experience. The insights that can come about from this other awareness, point of perception, and identity construct are useful to us at a singular level. When I shared this insight with Larry, we also felt that it would be a way to get millions of people to connect with the material and tools of empowerment that I am constantly bringing into our civilization for us to use. Yeah, because, you know, when I conceived of it, it felt like like a The Nine or uh, Abraham Hicks and... Uh, like a channeled identity? Like, a, like not or, like a channel, not, not so much a channel, but a perspective that was beyond our common one. Like The Nine brought in an experience of uh, Star Trek, right? Mm -hmm. And Star Trek had ideas that we thought of, but not all of them. All, some of the ideas are like, really? it really took some imagination yeah. to come up with, right? Yeah, some of them are That's very That's how we call it. We call it imagination. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with uh, the other types, sometimes channeled information. It felt like there would be insights that were direct and relevant to a singular you know, I, me, myself type expressions. The, mm -hmm. How do I make more money? How do I buy a car? I guess there were manifestation questions. You know, just those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But it didn't. Uh, it didn't seem like the. It seemed like the we function from a sense of reality that is like the point of perception behind your head. It's like the head's in the way. Mm -hmm. And every time you try to uh, would try to talk, there's a like my head would be in the way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, that's a clever putting together yeah. of data. Yes. So yeah. we were able to connect in a way that brought Made about any sense. any sense to either one of us, right? Because I would ask a weak a question, a question, and they'd be. It's almost like, are you really asking that? <laughs> Can you give an example of your well, experience used, of asking a question? We use we? bananas as a good example because always the questions would stumble upon our very framework of reality. Yes. Our very framework of reality is like moving your point of view from behind your head and all you have to do is move it up, but being, you know, talked by your mom and to put in it through your eyes. That's kind of stuck because I, I think the planet this experience has eyes is where you get your data kind mm -hmm. of like solid spots. You're like, you're kind of stuck into it when you yes, do it. Yeah, right. That's right. And the we's experience and framework of reality isn't through some eyes. No. So when you ask a question or you conceive of something that might be interesting to ask about the entire framework that you're asking from is based on a reality that isn't one that we share. Mm -hmm. So basically, you get lost. Yeah. Best example is like, uh, well, I think a very, very easy example is like somebody now, let's say at a, um, a let's say at a, one of those uh, consciousness conferences, you come up to somebody and say, hey, where are you from? And they're going to say, you mean? Who? The we? A person you would ask? Oh, you ask a person. You might where ask you a from? person where you're from, and right. they're going to say, Kansas. This life? Uh, this life? Or which star tribe? <laughs> yeah. Which incarnation? Yes. You know, what am I? Are you talking about my soul? My soul life? My body? My body life? Are we talking about 
this incarnation or the last one or the next Where do plane? I live right now? Is it the Where was I star born? system I'm like connected yeah. to? Pleiades or Arcturus? Yeah. Or you, which, what, what, what do you mean? Where am I from? Yes. Is that kind of a thing? You're like, you can't answer with Kansas. And the answers <laughs> aren't. It's just we get lost. I got lost. Yes. And we tried a lot. We did. I had some pretty snazzy colors for the screen, too. I even tried. I tried <laughs> every which us. way to hide us. Let's see, maybe that'll work. Didn't work. Yeah. Tried to bring in friends to help with it. Yeah, it was kind of hilarious. Yes, it was pretty funny. We got in a talk. We had to end up talk. That's where the banana thing came in. I don't know it's if anybody remembers the bananas, bananas. But, you know, basically we were all asking about bananas in some form or another. Yes. And then we would change the topic and it would be about bananas. Yes. And then we would like cancel that cancel that was really talk about something that matters and it'd be it'd be bananas <laughs> it would. every time for example <laughs> it would be something like <laughs> no i remember it it's just it's just so silly yes it'd be something <laughs> like you know let's say you're sitting with um a, a, a master of art right an artist yeah. who has mastered his art yeah. And he's teaching others this art. And you go up to him and say, can bananas be painted? <laughs> yes, yes, they can be painted. So if I paint a banana, does that mean that I have to peel it before I eat it? <laughs> <laughs> so like, wait, what? What does these have to do with <laughs> your master of art? <laughs> like, these are... Th well, I painted the banana. Now do I peel it or do I eat it with the paint on it? What's your, what's, your, what's your favorite crayon? What's your favorite crayon to paint a banana? Yeah. It was yellow? always about bananas. And, uh, and are all bananas literally. yellow? Or do bananas have other colors? Do they come in purple? Does Mars have bananas? <laughs> Does the moon have bananas? Are there bananas? other planets that have bananas? <laughs> So that was pretty interesting. And it went over and over and over. In the same thing. In the same way. It doesn't matter. So that was really interesting. And mm. as you saw, like an example today, I mean, the we are not even here. But Larry got very nervous and giggly and saying jokes that we couldn't understand and stuff like that, too. One concept that was brought in by Ilya, which yes. we'll probably talk some more about in the second hour, is having. The GT GBT tap chat four thing. Interview the we. Uh, you know. I don't know. It's something he had an idea with. I'm mm. not saying it's a good idea or a bad idea, but it's different. Why is it? An because idea? the GTP thing isn't going to ask about bananas. Hopefully. Are you sure about? No, that? I'm not sure. <laughs> it was written by banana people interested in bananas, <laughs> so. Well. It's all a program. There's no... Well, maybe Ilya can, in between our uh, pausing here and starting up with him, type in a few questions that the GTP thing would ask of the we. Okay. Just to see I what they sampled. he tried sampled. once already. Did he? Yeah. Well, it's worth a look. It might be good bananas. You're giving the GTP whatever way too much credit. <laughs> It's written yeah. by bananas. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just see what kind of bananas that thing comes up with. <laughs> All right. We did post um, a question in our uh, Telegram channels. Yes. Which was, if you could communicate with a species that was as old as the universe or something like that, who took a lot of care and attention and effort to create a way to communicate with us, what would you ask them? I remember you asked, you put that in there and... There was some, like, there was two or three questions which I felt were interesting. Unfortunately, I didn't bring them with me today. But quite honestly, the rest was all bananas. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of them were I, me, and myself. Like, what should I do to improve my relationships or something <laughs> like that? Right, yeah. yeah. Anyway, the 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 uh it felt it feels a little like we just don't understand what to talk about. True. And um there probably will come a time where we will. Yes. And when probably. that time comes, 
we'll still be here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like we're trapped in this fog of something. The fog, all we can talk about is stuff in the fog. All we can conceive is stuff in the fog. And when we conceive of stuff that's not in the fog, we're kind of like um, disembodied ourselves a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. uh, I don't know, it sort of stops itself. It stops itself? It just stops itself. Mm-hmm. I do want to talk a little bit more, uh, more examples of our experience with the we. Okay. But and let me just finish this. First. Right, you're right here. Honey. Okay, we discussed various ways to make the we available to our readers and our audience. One of them was to create a podcast to go with a series of articles written by the we. However, the podcast idea did not materialize. In the past few days, we decided to simply publish the website with the writings and let you know it's there if you want to connect to it, but with the we's point of view of perception. Right, and in that website. One of the ideas to do the podcast was something like this. I would just read the article and we would comment on what was written. We literally couldn't get past the first few lines. No. It, it, it turned into a giggle festival with no point. <laughs> yes, it did. Was like, what's going on here? <laughs> yes. So, I mean, the, the reading is super interesting, honestly. Yeah. But, but uh, uh, to try honest. to talk with the we about it while reading it, it was impossible. It didn't work. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. So uh, there's going to be a link to a couple of places um, that you can go to. Uh, we're still figuring out, but the actual address you can go to right away is the we talks.com. So T H E W E T A L K S dot com. The we talks dot com. Yeah. You can subscribe to the updates newsletter, and when they, we do write an article, we're going to put it, put it there. And you will receive a notification whenever they rewrite something for us to share, which won't be very often. <laughs> so it's not like you're going to get spammed with it. Maybe once a year, maybe twice a year, maybe a little bit more often. We don't yeah, know yet. It depends yeah. on how often we want to talk. Yeah. You can also share this website with everyone you know and is interested in this type of material. And... I think that labeling this type of material is a little bit, it can have its pitfalls, but to me, um, if when I think about this type of material, I generally think about people who actually either have a mind which perceives the world in a different way than our regular mind, or someone who, like you said earlier, was uh, channeling material and stuff. That is also different viewpoints of uh, existence. And my face can't you can see my face in the video now. <laughs> Dora's helping with the weed. Dora is helping. She loves, she loves them. So um, <clears throat> that this type of material basically, yeah, it is a little bit different to how we see the world. And I have found that slowly but surely in my work and my books, my novels, I've been bringing a little bit of that different uh, awareness or viewpoint, right? Like the back of the head, looking at the world from the back of your head, um, into our civilization by writing these books or these articles and creating classes and courses that scratch at the edges of reality. And that material has had, in my estimation, a lot of success in allowing individuals to expand their awareness and become more able, capable, and more powerful in living their everyday lives. Which at the end of the day, to me, you know, it's like spreading the light, right? We're artists of the light, so Mm -hmm. anything that allows us to create light on the planet is better right? have light experiences yeah yeah so um the experience really for me like uh, the start of the article i talked a little bit about it uh the my formative years and the majority of my experience all the way to around 12 um was mainly uh, as a we experience so I didn't have much in the 
area of being a like identifying with uh, myself as in a name or personality, that type of thing. Uh, but I did have a lot of interest. I used to, and still do find the world, the physical universe, really fascinating. Really, really fascinating. And people too. And I would experience life just gathering all this information. You know, it's like uh, the nature of this collective called the we is data gathering mostly. And... Which is not that different to humans. I mean, you yeah. as humans, we're gathering experiences. Right. That's what it feels like we're doing. Yeah. It's like memories create us and whatever, you know. Actions define who we are, that type of thing. So it's not that different, but my experience was not so much as Inelia and more to do with an, an experience of not being like that singular being, you know. So there was a lot of things I didn't quite understand growing up, like how people like would become very attached to something. The times that I tried getting attached to a toy or something never worked out very well for me. Um, and other such things, you know, it's like, it's really difficult for me to even describe how it was different because I didn't have the experience of childhood. Yeah, it's like from the I mean myself. Right? It wasn't different because it was your experience, right? Yes, exactly. So how do you know what's what the other people were feeling? The other people were feeling except for what they told me at the time, right? right. Yeah. So yeah. 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 So just um for clarity's sake you are still we, you're just we focused as I. Right. Um, becoming an I-focused individual was a journey. I had to learn how to do it. Um, it involved like ways of interacting, learning to communicate from an I perspective, having importances, um, managing to create the semblance of ego. And, um, yeah, there was a lot of stuff to, like to get, go through. Like get into your head to look through your eyes. There are a lot of get, get look into your eyes stuff. Yes, yeah. And even today I find it really hard to gather importances yeah, it makes it hard to be your husband too once Does in a while. It? Yeah. How come? Because I'm not as that important. <laughs> you want to be the focus of my world? Well, important. <laughs> I am the focus of your world, but not Wee's world. <laughs> Wee's don't have that importance. Yes, that's true. So it's not that it's a, I want it to be different. It's just it's. It's a different experience to be that because, yes. because it's a different, it's a different relationship, honestly. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think that what you're referring to is when I, I change my awareness viewpoint in my body and interactions from being a singular, as in Inelia, to being that other Inelia, which is the we, right? right? And the we have a lot of things that are not what we normally identify with as a person. True, right. So. that you, They don't relate to you as you would expect a person to relate to you because you look right. like a person, but you don't relate to each other. You don't relate as a person. Correct. I think that's the best, maybe what a way to understand it. And um, some people who are very, very, I guess, absorbed in their their singularness, their mm -hmm. I mean myselfness, they can ask questions of the we and they really don't care the answers, so they're fine. You know, it's fine. Like, ask the question and I got to answer Sarah's is another question. But they're mostly thinking from the I space. And when you open up a little bit to try to be less of the I am interested in this question, it's my question, and more uh, a question that a we 
this different consciousness might respond to, you get stuck and no questions really come out. Hmm. It's a really strange thing. I haven't experienced it except for with the we, you know. Hmm. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> so Ilya, I think, had experience with uh, asking questions. I remember quite a few people said, oh, I can do this, no problem. And we sat him in the chair, and it was just banana after banana after banana. <laughs> and they're like, I well, can brain, do it. My brain turned to mush. What's going on here? <laughs> my brain turned to mush. The questions I had even written down. They made no sense. They made no sense when you started asking them. It was yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. But the writing... It seems like the writing is a medium that can work. I think so. Yeah. Because, you know, I imagine when you write, that perspective comes in, right? Sometimes. Mm, I'm, no, not always. So, um, for a period of time in my teens, we were developing the I'm and myself in Elia Benz. Well, at the time I was in Elia Omada. And... The we took a back seat so that I could have a full awareness of being an I, me, and myself without, um, I don't know how to say it, you know, <laughs> without interrupting the flow of experience, like a journey, right? You don't want to keep taking breaks in your journey. You'll never get there. So for a time, the only way for me to communicate with the we was to write something out on a, I had a, a journal. So I would write my question in the journal and I'd close my eyes and then I would, as I am and myself, I would like have a blank space, like a, a blackout space. And then 10 minutes later, I would come back as an I am and myself and the answer had been, the question had been answered two or three pages of writing. Okay. Now that's very similar to what people experience when channeling or even possession, right? But even then I knew it was different to those things. I knew it was a perspective. Um, my parents, no, my parents, but my mom even took me to a psychologist or a psychiatrist, I can't remember which one, to test me for personality disorders, like multiple personality disorders and stuff like that. And they came back saying, no, <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing like that here, right? Because there's other signs and things I think that people go through when they have those personalities, um, issues. So it wasn't that. And the answers they gave to my questions were thorough, uh, very interesting and broadening of an understanding of the universe we live in. So to me, it was that's the way I communicated for quite some time. And then um, when I was asked to go public in 2010, even then uh, I was in my 30s. And even then I can quite honestly say that my I, me and myself personality wasn't very well developed. I can vouch for that because I met you in 2011-ish. Yeah. And it was really kind of hard to have a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it didn't seem like there was a you there. That's how right. it felt. <laughs> <laughs> and um, like I said, most of my the people I lived with, my uh, spouses, my children, my parents, my siblings, my other relatives and friends, pretty much never paid any attention, right? They never really noticed there was anything. They knew it was I was odd. I mean, my sister always used to tell people I was a little bit special, right? <laughs> and um, not to worry about the things I used to say because I was a little bit special, you know. So, uh, and but you know, it's like that. That was it, you know. Yeah, my brother and I. Uh, I don't know why my brother was tested, but. As a little child, I was tested for uh, Asperger's or whatever they're called. I can't remember the name of it now. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, my parents took us to get tested and all sorts of stuff throughout my life. So, anyways, 
this is a form of communication. And when I was asked to go public, I was given the knowledge and advice that I had to step up my development of a singular. fully formed singular identity, a Sinelia. Because otherwise people would not be able to relate to me. They wouldn't. Just period. <laughs> so I went ahead and started investigating how to do that. I practiced a lot. and if, But even today, the Aimee and myself is like uh, almost more artificial than... It's not natural to me. Like in the morning I wake up and I have to step into the I mind myself, not the other way around, right? Right. And, um, but it's been okay. I know you've had some issues, uh, as being my husband, right? You had some issues <laughs> with regards to the whole interaction with the singular even. So anyways, I thought it was time to, Make it more available to put out some of the writings. Uh, today, I don't have to blank out to go from one awareness field to the other awareness field. Uh, I can do it pretty consistently. Um, I still get my physical body is resistant to that change. Um, I have to, for example, one time... Uh, one of the interviews we tried to do, uh, it kept going back and forth from Inelia to the Wii, to Inelia to the Wii, to Inelia to the Wii. And if I tried to do that too many times, I get the most horrendous headache, like stabbing pains in my brain. <laughs> so I try not to do that. But occasionally, and um in a more controlled manner, I would um, be able to sit down for a while um, and from the I perspective, set up a, a conversation. Because it's, it's not just about asking the weak questions, right? It's also interaction, it's a communication. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the awareness field that I am, the we, has such different perceptions of the universe that they're interesting to me, right? As a, somebody who went to school, like everybody else here. And yeah, so I thought it was time that we could share it. And here we are. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what Ilya and Alina have to say about it. Yes. Should be interesting. interesting. I hope, I hope <laughs> I it's hope. not all banana, Sunny. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> Give me five. Love you. <laughs>